Open up for questions, Coach Barnes. Coach, what did you think about the game overall? <laughs> a little bit ugly, but um, I thought much better second half. We continued to play really well in the third quarters. But I think um, a lot of turnovers, a little sloppy at times, but I'm just happy. You know, this is a tough time for teams. This is during finals, so mentally it's kind of, we saw that in practice a little bit this week. But um, overall, I think it impressed the way they responded after halftime in better second half. What do you think about Deja James and his, especially her shooting from the outside? I th yeah, she's, she's able to. She can shoot the three. Um, she's done that in practice. But I thought that what she did, in, I liked um, the fact that she didn't force things early. And in in, when she went in the game, she passed up. Everybody was like, oh, she passed up a shot. But it was, I called an offense. She was trying to, to execute. I really liked that. Um, five for eight, really good. I think, I don't know, she was close to a career high, right? She was uh, three, four, four, three, four, three way. Three-way. So, but she was great. I think... Um, you know, one turnover, because our post been turn the ball over a lot. Um, it travels, or not handling double teams well. And then to be um, one for three from the three, I thought she took some pretty good shots. She did a good job. Do you think the turnovers are related to them just trying to play too fast? No. I think the turnovers are because, because all of a sudden we love to jump and make passes. And we've been working on that a lot. I'm going to continue to work on it every day. But jump stopping and making passes and not trying. A lot of times we want to thread the needle. We want to throw the million dollar pass instead of just making the easy reversal. When we make the easy reversal, we get open shots. But I think that it's just a lot of unforced turnovers. I, we had a lot, a lot in the first half. I think 16 or something in the first half. So second half better. But just still, we, we can't average 20 turnovers a game. It's just, it's not good. Like, slow starts have been an issue. Is that kind of why, is that why Julia started tonight? I'm try, I was trying to see, um, you know, I'm trying to find a combination that can change that. And it's, it doesn't mean that Julia's going to stay in a starting lineup or Lauren's not. It's just trying to give me a different look to see what kind of energy we can have. But, but then I think that um, Lauren did a really good job of still staying in it mentally, coming in and giving us some great minutes. I thought she played a very good game tonight. Um, and it's not about scoring. She made plays. She made extra passes. She gave us some, um, you know, she got some 50-50 balls. So I think that she did a really good job. But yes, I am trying. I was trying to address the slow starts and, you know, we're still not where I want us to be. But um, if our first quarters were like our third quarters, I'd be a little happier. But the fact is, at least we're ha able to gather at halftime and come back and play good in the third quarter. Um, Coach, have you mentioned the stiffer competition that's ahead, coming ahead in the Pac-12? If so, uh, what have you told your team? Well, I've just continued to um, emphasize and reiterate that we have to get better every game. Um, that regardless of who we're playing, we have to approach each game, you know, just like it's just we're only looking at that game, we're not looking ahead, but get better at something. Um, I thought we got better at some things tonight, but we still have to play more consistent. I think what, what our bench did was give us really good minutes. Um, you know, I know that the next challenge is Kansas on the road, so that'll be a, that would be a good win if we can go into Kansas and get a win, but it's going to be hard. Um, but every, every game was preparing us for the Pac-12, but you're right, the stiffer competi competition in Pac-12 will be a challenge, so that's why we have to conti continue these next few weeks to get better and prepare for it. Um, is there a certain player that has been stepping up to uh, encourage the team to play at a higher level? Well, I think that um, we have different people lead at different times. Um, I think but the const one of the constant leaders is um, LB, LaBrittany. I think that she did a really good job. Yesterday she got on one of her teammates, and, the, and I was happy to see that because I think – that your team becomes a lot better when your players can hold each other accountable. Um, and I think you see that with Melina a lot. Melina's, even when she's not at the one, she's um, guiding her teammates and she's a little bit more vocal when Lucia's on the floor because Lucia isn't as vocal because the language barrier is a little bit harder. So I think Melina's really done a good job of that. And I think um, from the bench, our bench has been really good. Um, Eugenie has been very, very good on the bench. What she does is, regardless if she plays or if she doesn't, um, she will, when her teammate makes a three, she goes up and gives her teammates high fives. Those little things are very important for me as a head coach. Um, I think that it takes a lot and it's out of yourself to do that. And it's, it's very selfless and um, it's, it's a sign of a really good teammate. And I think she's done a good job of keeping the bench engaged by doing that stuff. Because they were undersized um, and you guys outscored them 41 to 18 in the paint, uh, moving into Pac-12 play later on down the road mm -hmm. um, and seeing what Deja's done tonight, especially from the outside, are you going to encourage her to shoot that a little bit more often if she's open? or? Yeah, I think that I'm, I'm a coach to where if you're open and you, and you practice on that shot, like we practice on trail threes or reversal, three, th post players getting the 
um, three point shots at the top of the key. So if you're open and it's not the very first pass or it's not after a team's on a run, I think that's a shot that Deja, Bree, Destiny, LB, I encourage them all to take that shot. Um, and I, I think Deja <laughs> took took that tonight and, and it was good. Um, I think, but with the undersized team, we continue to try to thread the needle inside. That's where we had a lot of turnovers. That's what I don't like and I don't accept. Um, or off a very fast reversal and the team just went on a run. That's when we don't want that shot. We want to work more into the rest of our offense and make the defense play longer. But yes, um, De Deja, she continues to work and prove she can make those shots in practice and she's, she's allowed to take those in the game. Lord but me. you do that in practice. You prove it and you earn that stuff in practice. I don't want like... You've never taken that shot in practice, and then you come in the game and you take like five of them. That's not acceptable, and that's not going to happen. So, um, you know, like I don't remember Belinda taking too many of the one foot floaters over three people in practice, so <laughs> she's not allowed to shoot those in the game. I was going to say, uh, Lauren made a couple mid range jumpers, kind of deep long twos. Would you like to see her extend out to the three point line? I would, um, but that's for her confidence right now. What? I, but I'm not going to change it right now because right. she's so confident in that spot. But I think eventually, you know, for her, a lot of it's mental because her foot will be right on the three and she'll take it. But stepping back, she's not as confident. But that's just something that we're continuing to develop because she's capable of making a three point shot. Um, but I, I like the fact she's taking and making that mid range. That's a really good shot for her. Um, and, you know, I think that Lauren's given us some really good minutes. So whether she starts or doesn't, she's a great teammate. She comes in and does those little things, doesn't make mistakes, and I like that. Um, but I, like I said, I really like the intangible things that she does. She does a lot of stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet, like the extra pass or the quick reversal. Those things are very important for us to be successful. Change of topic. Um, were you one of the lead recruiters for Kelsey Plum when you were at Washington? Yeah, we all recruited, but Kelsey is from San Diego, so... Um, it was kind of, you know, recruiting by committee. We never take it. We never considered it ours or mine, and I, I don't do that here on this staff. But, yes, I was very involved in her recruiting. What did you think about her breaking the Pac-12? I mark? think Kelsey's a phenomenal player. She'll be a, a pro player. She'll be a longtime pro. Um, I was really happy. Um, you know, she's just – she is one of the hardest working players that I've ever been around. I've been around some of the best players in the world for, throughout my career. Um, she, There's no one that works harder than her. And just to watch her grow every year and, you know, watch her evolve into a great leader, too. And, and you know, I challenged her. I was the person that challenged her to be Academic All-American. She got that. So I, I'm really happy. She's um, someone I still talk to a lot. And, you know, I'm, she's great. What are some of the traits that you saw in her through the recruiting process that maybe you didn't realize afterwards and then you just realized maybe she was... Like the, the work ethic, you can't well, see her in high school as much as you can. In so I knew she worked tirelessly. I knew that she was a really hard worker, but I didn't know to what extent. I knew um, one of my good friends is one who trains her, um, a guy who I've known for 20 years, Barry. Randall has trained her every day so know, since like eighth grade, so six in the morning. I knew she did that, but it wasn't until I really saw how dedicated she is, how hungry she is from coaching her, then it, it's just like unmatched, and it's really hard to match her. Um, it, there can be a, we can have a three hour practice. She will do a two a day on her own. So it's just, but it's the thing that separates her. That's what makes her such a great player. But what I love is that she came in, um, she came in and was a freshman. She was a team, team captain her freshman year and it was hard. And you know, she wanted that. She steps up to the challenge. She's, um, invites that type of stuff. So, but to watch her grow and to not only, her work ethic wasn't going to change. That's her, and that's great. That's what's going to make her a great pro. But what I loved is watching her um, change into a great leader, you know, and learning how to pull people along. And she's the person that changed the culture at Washington. She's someone who, you know, she, she was in there working so much extra. Then she brought one teammate, then two, and then it became the norm. And, and, and she's the one who started that change of the culture, and that's important. So that's... I'm looking for a couple. I'm looking for some Kelsey poems right now, <laughs> and it's hard. You'll probably never find her. she. And she is a she's a player that comes along every ten years. You're not gonna have her one of her every four years, and you may maybe not every ten years. But those are the players that are so hungry and want to be so good that change the culture of your team. And like it was hard, you know, seeing that. And I explained to some of my players, like, hey, you want to be good? This is what she does. Kelsey's not the most athletic. She's not going to jump out of the gym. She's not the best shooter in the world. She just has a mentality that is a never quit, never die, and I'm going to be good. And she works at her craft, and that makes her great. And I'm telling you, I've been around Katie Smith, Lauren Jackson, you know, all the best players in the world over my career. And 
she's right up there with working the hardest. I mean, I'd say Lauren Jackson, her, and then that's what, that's what makes made Lauren the best in the world for so many years. That's why Kelsey's gonna be great. And she's someone that every coach would love to coach. So I was, so to make a long story short, I, I was very happy for her to have that. I'm really happy. You know, really, really happy and proud. And I, I actually called her and talked to her about it. And she's so humble and stuff. And, but I'm telling you, she, after she has that, she's on to the next thing. It, it's not even a thing to her. You know, after she got that, it's like, I want to get this. Like, she's always, that bar is always high. So it's, it's really cool to see. So how does that work like staying in touch with her? Because you're going to have to coach against her in like, yeah, the I'm, season. So. Well, and it's hard. It, and that's a hard, and that's what Coach Neighbors and I are really close. Um, he's one of my closest friends, and um, I love him to death. And he, he knows that I have a really, I recruited a yeah. lot of those players and I have a really good relationship with them. So they'll call me once in a while. We're not talking about their team or anything, but I'm in Seattle. They come by and see me when I was recruiting at a game. Um, so it's just a relationship that won't ever go away. So he's, I think some coaches would have been like, no, you can't talk to my players, but he already knows I know all the plays and stuff, so it doesn't matter. But <laughs> no, um, they have a great team and me and him, I talk to him almost every day also. So um, it's kind of the way it is. But the, on a side note, they all want to kill us. You know, it's because they're, they're like, oh, I can't wait to play Arizona. I'm like, really? <laughs> but it's going to be fun. But they're going to try to, they're all going to try to have 30 points each. I already know that they're gonna, it's gonna be fun, but no, they're um, they're great kids, and I think what's cool is that a lot a lot of how Arizona is today, it's how Washington was five six years ago. So that's what I liked, it. and we can do that. And it t it took a Kelsey Plum, a Talia, Chantel Osohar. It took some of those players. No one would have ever thought that that team would have would have gone to the Final Four. So it takes a couple of those, but Chantel, Kelsey, those players changed that culture, and so that's what I'm trying to do here. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There you go.